What's up guys, it's me Manshuk and today I wanted to share the insights about the profession that I'm in. If you're curious about my background, I worked in HR in the fast-moving consumer goods sector aka FMCG sector, in higher education and in investment sector for almost 10 years. So I got exposure to almost all the areas in HR such as compensation and benefits, labor relations, recruitment and talent management and so on. Why I'm making this video because recently I started my own YouTube channel and I watched one video by a really cool guy his name is Shane Hummus and by the way this video is not to diss him or get an angry reaction to his video called is HR degree worth it I love his channel he's a great guy and I just want to share what I think about the same topic which is about HR degree and HR work. Just because many things have already been said there about HR management, employment growth, salaries, but in this video I'm going to cover common misconceptions of this job. I will also compare different degrees that would actually help you land an HR job and what is the future for this profession in my view and discuss one of the notable job trends that I noticed. So stay tuned. There are many misconceptions about HR work. Mostly it's about HRs being admins, maybe a bit higher than office operations administration people and it's hugely undervalued because HR has built a reputation of just hiring and firing people without having knowledge about these processes. Most of my friends think that HR is an easy office job with good pay and the biggest misconception is that this job can be done without a professional degree. Also half of my friends would say HRs are there to make employees happy HRs are followers and have no power in decision-making process. Well, maybe there is some truth in it, but it was like that in the past. But things are changing and requirements for HR professionals are also growing because companies are fighting for top talents and top place in the market and expectations that companies set for employees and their HR departments is higher than ever. What about the best degrees to start your career in HR? So Shane said you can get into HR field with a business degree or a psychology degree, but it's much practical if you actually have an HR degree or at the very least a business management degree with concentration in HR. Why? Because competition to get a job is pretty high. The recruiter and the hiring manager would be more comfortable giving the job to the one who graduated with an HR degree, not the one with general business degree or psychology degree. And why would anyone with a business degree choose HR? when they can try something different like driving sales and be at the forefront of the business. So having a business degree and getting into HR in my view would be that HR was the second choice and never the first one. And personally, I would hire someone with an HR degree because I would be more confident than the person who graduated with this degree actually knew what they wanted. Because HR deals with legislation and compensation, an HR student would normally have classes depending on the length and the focus of their program. But HR students can select a wide range of classes depending on their preferences. And some HR students can learn applied predictive analytics used specifically in HR, as well as they can dive into advanced internal investigation process and take selective HR courses where they can examine in detail the most significant job-related classes and conflicts and how to possibly solve those problems on the workplace. And HR students who graduated with HR degree would better understand how important health and safety regulations are. And those HR courses will definitely help you in your job search and advance you in hiring process, as well as those who learn HR specifics in college would have better chances to be promoted in the career vertically. If you don't know, there is a big thing in HR called big data and HRs are no longer simply manual admins. So I hope so. Of course, a general degree in business management or psychology would set you aside if you are hired for recruitment or payroll or compensation entry-level positions, which is quite a narrow niche. And it's hard to switch to other HR fields if one day you don't want to be in payroll or recruitment with those 
with this degree. But HR grads would have a better understanding of most HR jobs requirements and can start returning investments that employer invested in them because they learned HR related subjects in college already. Yes, I get it that schools and workplaces differ a lot. Sometimes they don't even match, but I'm thinking about the hiring process and who gets better chances to get hired. And if you are a mid-career professional, you would also be a very HR person if you graduated with an HR degree. And I could feel it when my bosses, for example, who had HR backgrounds and who hadn't. Most non-HR bosses didn't understand how much employees mean to company and treated HR as a support function. Whereas my other bosses who had HR degrees could push forward strategic people related decisions more effectively and those organizations would have better HR policies and programs, which in the end affect turnover and employee retention and the labor cost. So it's just my experience. You can share what you think in the comment section below. Even though many employers still prefer to hire someone who has field knowledge, some very, very forward thinking employers don't require a degree at all. So check out this vacancy and see how Shopify sets their qualification requirements. And this is a market research manager position for qualifications they require market research, quantitative analysis, strategic perspective, drive and vision, thrive in ambiguity, strong communicator, project management, and so on. I checked other open positions and didn't find a formal education requirement. So anyone who has those qualities and skills can apply. So I believe this is the future, but it's distant. Because companies like Shopify are an exception and most employers still require formal education and you probably would need one if you are not a 13 year old kid. Then as you progress further in your HR career you would definitely need to get a license from your local professional council because licensed professionals can handle more complex issues especially when there is a critical issue such as strikes, lockouts, layoffs, incidents or any other big risk situations that happen in the workplace depending on the industry. So some industries like construction have higher safety arrangements and if you work in tech sector, you wouldn't encounter much of a safety problem. So you can choose what industry is more exciting to you. And how about the job market? So yes, the job market looks pretty much saturated. At the beginning of 2021, Statista reported 612,000 HR workers in the US alone. I don't trust stats presented by Bureau of Labor Statistics because they included HR assistants in the information clerk's job category, which isn't exactly accurate. So according to BLS, reserving flight tickets is exactly the same as scheduling candidates in interview or pulling out HR reports. That's why I consider BLS doesn't do a good job predicting future jobs and calculating all the relevant employees out there. Alternatively, I checked out LinkedIn and saw a staggering 4,850,000 results of people who marked themselves as HR professionals in the United States alone. So considering that there are almost 700,000 grads with different business degrees according to education data who graduate annually from U.S. colleges and because HR management is considered to be a business degree, even one-fourth of those 700,000 grads would be roughly 175,000 potential HR to Bs. And LinkedIn has 200,000 open HR job positions. It's 24 HRs per one position just in LinkedIn. There are no jobs for everyone, guys. That's why it's oversaturated. And I believe with automation and outsourcing, the labor market becomes even more competitive and more hostile because, you know, networking is number one source to get a job and getting a job is not for everyone as we see. So what's the future of HR and where are we all heading to? Entry-level HR jobs are at risk of automation and will be outsourced overseas to reduce labor costs in the next five to 10 years. And also Shane showed you that HR manager's job is not at the risk of automation, but 
Guys, really, you have to work your ass off to reach that level. And yes, HR managers will not be automated. And I agree because who is gonna deal with all those problems when they happen every time? You don't, robots don't have emotions and you also said you have a range of emotions. What's your range of emotions? I can show you. Okay. This is angry. What does happy look like? <laughs> It's not gonna be CEO, it's not gonna be CFO, COO, or whatever, C-suite level executive. It's gonna be HR and it's gonna be a real human being. Can you imagine every time an employee has a problem like sexual harassment or policy interpretation or bullying or anything like that, the employees will not come to speak to Sophia. They wanna speak with a real human. So working for a top employer today looks like more like a win-win. But back in the days, many large companies and factories exploited people because there were no strict regulations around work, wages. Wages were typically low or at the minimum. Working hours were not regulated and child labor was a common thing and employers didn't care much about health and safety, not to mention caring about promotion and development of its employees. I know it still exists today, which is very sad, but. I look at the bigger picture and I see that things improved dramatically thanks to very bright labor propagandists and governments who work and still working in collaboration with each other to make our lives better than those of our grandparents and parents. So if you wanna thrive in HR, you need to be a workforce engineer today because the days when HRs had administrative and reactive position, is fading away. Besides all the common personal skills, such as communication, conflict resolution, active listening, and so on, HRs need to have analytical skills together with technology skills. They have to improve existing processes, they have to interpret data and sell the new employee-related programs to CEO with high ROI. Good luck to everyone who is starting a career in HR. I absolutely love it and would choose this profession again 10 years ago when I just started. Check out the rest of my videos on my channel. They can be very helpful and subscribe, hit the notification bell, like this video if you liked it. I'll see you later. Bye.